Good day, everyone. This is Mark Scheller. And today I want to discuss the three rules to learn that will make your future egress windows legal. We will talk about whether or not these side access windows will bring you more safety or more danger. And hey, Mark, will these egress openings in the side of my home's foundation cause it to be structurally broken? Lastly, we will discuss the effect that these egress windows have on your home's future resale value. We are going to do all of that and more with America's favorite topic of egress windows next. No, 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 next. <laughs> Three rules to make your egress window legal. 5.7 square feet is the magic size that the code wants as far as the raw window opening itself. So let's check it out, I can demonstrate. Open the window all the way to the stock and with my fancy wooden stick, I will demonstrate. One, two, three, four. So they're looking to measure this actual, the maximum opening that it can have. And the goal there is that it's supposed to be big enough for fire and emergency personnel to get inside with all of their gear and their breathing apparatus on. Not. There are three types of windows you can choose. Either a single hung window like this one, but only the bottom half opens. Or a sliding window like this one but only one side opens, or the holy grail of egress windows are casement windows like this one, because it opens 90% of the way, which is fabulous. So let's talk about the minimum size of the window structure itself. 20 by 24, 20 inches wide by 24. And let's measure 20 inches is the minimum. This one, Mark, is 46. How about that? It passes. The minimum height is 24 inches. This one's 45. So piece of cake. The code does not want a wide, skinny window like this or a big, tall one like this either. Okay. Next, I want to calculate the size of the egress opening itself. So let's be the actual surface-to-surface -surface contact and we will go the width of this window opening 20 inches. Remember that, 20 inches. And let's do the height. The height is 44 inches. Who has a calculator? 20 inches by 44 inches is 880 square inches, which is about 880 of these. All right, divide by 144 square inches per square foot. And the magic answer is 6.1 square feet, 6.1 square feet. This window passes code because last time I checked, 6.11 is more than 5.7. There's one more criteria to measure. Okay, this window height here from my feet to this window height, you can't put the window sill up here because then grandma and grandpa can't get out, all right? So the actual sill height has to be between 24 and 44 inches. So if we measure this, we go down to the surface floor, 32 inches. 32 inches is also between 24 and 44. So everything, not some things, everything about this window passes egress. Congratulations, homeowner. But Mark, is there a structural risk to adding big windows like this one into thin foundations? That's a very good question. So these windows are big and they can compromise the strength of any wall. Most new construction openings like this one will have thick concrete over the top of the wall here. And there will also be two pieces of thick rebar across it. This is good, that is strong, this is beef. But to install a large cutout window like this one in an old house, 
can severely limit the foundation's ability to support the house in the future. Okay, so let me ask you a question. Is it safe or is it dangerous? How about we play a little game called what's more likely? Is it more likely that someone in the next 40 years is going to need to get out of this basement because it's on fire and they cannot locate any of the other three exits to the building or that a thief, maybe even a teenager, is going to enter your egress window, steal your bourbon and your jewelry. Does this egress window make your home safer or more dangerous? To me, the answer is unclear. Egress, ingress, egress, ingress, egress, ingress. So Mark, can we count this as a legal bedroom now? Have we done enough? Three factors, if a bank appraiser came in here, they would be looking number one for this egress window size that we've already unpacked and this one passed. The second one is that the room size, the actual floor space must be 70 square feet as a minimum, which is just a little bit bigger than an eight by eight. That's pretty easy to reach. The third one, and it's not very well known, is that half of the room ceiling must be seven feet, I'm six, seven feet or more. So if you have a room that's kind of under a stairwell or there's some duct work from the furnace that's kind of pinching you, the ceiling height must be seven feet or more for half of it. Most real estate consumers, the vast majority have been taught that in order for a room to be a legal bedroom, it must have a closet, which is over here. I searched deep into IRC and Boca code and found no such provision that a closet is a demand for a legal bedroom, okay? Now, the next question that I get asked a lot is, Mark, 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 will my property value go up if I add another room like this to my house? So if you have a two bedroom house with two bedrooms above grade and you add a third bedroom like this, the numbers show that you should expect a 2% to 3% appreciation level just for adding a bedroom. So if your home is $250,000, 3% or so of that is 7,500. So is finishing a lower level basement room expensive? Yes, but it should have an immediate positive effect on your home's value. Mark, Mark, what if I have three bedrooms above grade and I want to put a fourth one into the basement that counts with all of these provisions. Then the statistics show that we're going to get a 5% to 6% upgrade by going from a three bedroom to a four and five to 6% of your home value is probably a pretty big number that justifies the extra expense that you would spend on a lower level bedroom. Today, I have been discussing both the BOCA and the IRC codes. Please make darn sure that the rules in your county are aligned with the guidance I've shared. The last thing I want to do is mislead anyone. So if you have found this content helpful, and if you want more from me, then egress over to that side button below. It gives me a big boost of energy when I see listeners subscribing. Enjoy your day and make sure to follow those simple egress guidelines. It's official. Mark Scheller has left the building through the side egress window. Goodbye, everybody.